So at the time I was 18, fresh out of high school, and I got an inbox from this man. He saw my drawings on Facebook and he wanted me to paint a picture for him for one hundred dollars. I never painted for anybody, never had a job, never made any money off of anything, everything I had my parents gave me at that time. So when he told me $100, I started to think like, oh my God, wow. Maybe I could start painting for money. This was like the start of me painting for money. So I took the money and when I met him, he was like, oh, you're so beautiful. You're so Spicy meat. Yeah, boy. I ignored him because, you know, he was older. And when I got home, he inboxed me again. He was like, um, I think you're really beautiful. And I would like to continue to give you money without any benefits. And I'm like, hold on. Hold on, my man. I don't get down like that. You feel me? Like, <laughs> nah, I ain't no prostitute. Come on now. He was like, no, you don't have to do anything. You don't even have to text me. You don't have to call me. I just want to give you money because you're beautiful. And I think you deserve it. I'm like, no. So I tell my best friend, my best friend, she's all about that money. And she was like, girl, you better get that money. He's talking about no strings attached. I will drop you off. Man, no, no, no. I will take you by there to get the money. If you don't want the money, I will take it. I'm like, okay, well, I guess. I get the money. So weeks pass by and he stuck true to his word. I would drive by, we'll drive, he'll be at the end of the road and I pick up some money from him. He'll give me like a hundred dollars a week or whatever. Like I said, I never had a job or anything. My parents always gave me money. So it felt good to get my own money without asking my parents for it. Even though I wasn't doing nothing for it. <laughs> Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. So one day I said, you know what? Um, I probably need to stop getting money from this guy because it's kind of strange. Eventually he's going to want something from me. And I tell my friends this. And she's like, maybe one day you should sit down and chill with him. My friend was a bad influence. She was like, maybe one day you should sit down and chill with him. Maybe he's a cool guy. I'm like, okay. So I went to this man's house, sat down and chill with him. And he seemed so cool. Like... We vibe like that. So we started dating. I kept it a secret from my parents for like a couple of months um, because he was 32 and I was 18. And I used my ex, um, my ex that I treated so bad. I had to apologize to him because I treated that boy so bad. He was my first boyfriend. But I used him as a cover. I would go to his house and I would ask my dad because I couldn't drive and I didn't have a car. I would ask my dad to drop me off at my ex's house. And then I will tell my ex, oh, my aunt is about to pick me up. And then the older guy would pick me up. I, am the one, the way your son don't need I told my parents that my ex was my friend. And they, they thought that me and my ex was getting back together and I kept telling them, no, he's just my friend. One day, my ex came to the car <laughs> when this guy was picking me up and he was like I was like oh no don't call him to call my auntie she's about to come pick me up he was like I want to come I want to um walk you to the car I'm like no now he had this long road this long dirt road from his house to the highway so I walked up that long road and he was right behind me and I'm like dude just stay in the house he was like no I want to go with you so I'm like okay come on so he walked me to the guy's car and I rushed and got in. And my ex, like, he, I don't know if he knew it was a guy in that car, but he like rushed up to the window and he was like, hey, hey, what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? And the guy, the, the older guy, I'm just gonna name him Todd. Todd was like, you good? I was like, yeah. And he like drove off. So when he drove off, Later on, I was supposed to get dropped back off at my ex's house so my dad could pick me up from there. My dad came to pick me up and didn't call me. 
he came early. He came to my ex house and my ex was crying to my dad. He was like, she left with this man. He knew who the man was. He was she left with this man named Todd. <sighs> and they went off. And my dad was like, what? And my, my cousins, this is how I knew my dad. My dad and them never told me. My cousins and my brother told me because they were with my dad. They were like, um, he was crying or whatever. And my dad was like surprised because everybody thought I was really getting back with my ex. And I told them, I don't want him. Anyways, so eventually my, my parents never told me about that situation. My cousin and my brother never told me until like a year later after it happened. So I'm thinking my parents don't know. They kept asking me, are you seeing somebody? Like, they kept acting suspicious, but I didn't know that they knew. So, eventually, I decided to tell my parents, like, hey, I'm dating a guy named Todd. He's 32. And they're like, we don't approve of that. My dad was like, you know, you're grown. So, you're, you're not grown, but you're 18, and I can't control what you do. You're going to do what you want to do anyways. But my mom was like, you know, when this man hurts you, He's going to hurt you bad. And I don't want that for you. But if you have to learn the hard way, then you'll just have to learn the hard way. I'm like, man, I don't know what they talking about. Whatever. So, I started dating this guy publicly. We're all on Facebook, everywhere. Like, you know, everybody knows us as a 32-year-old and an 18-year-old around town. My, my dad's a pastor, by the way. And I started, like wanting my own independence from my family because this guy has his own place he had this trailer and i wanted my own independence at that time because i didn't feel like i wanted to follow my parents rule i wanted to be grown i wanted to be this man's age um he asked me to move in with him so i did like an idiot i moved in when I got to this place to move in, the furniture and stuff changed. The pictures were different. It was pictures of his cousin. And I'm like, what the hell happened to every, like what, what happened? Why is everything different? He was like, oh, this is my, my cousin's trailer. I'm renting it from her. She just got married, and I'm just renting a trailer from her or whatever. I still had moved her stuff out. I look in some drawers, and some of her stuff is still in the drawers, and I'm like, okay. I never met this cousin. So, oh, Jesus. Time went by. And I was in college at this time. Like I said, I was fresh out of high school. I was in college. And he tells me, you don't need to go to college anymore. You can stay home. I got you. I'm like, what? He's like, you can stay home. I want you to be a stay-at-home wife and mom. Because one day we're going to get married. One day we're going to have kids. And I want you to stay home with my kids. So I'm like, are you sure? He was like, yeah, I got you. So it, he convinced me to stay at home, quit college. I'm at home every day not doing anything but cooking for him and cleaning up the house. Time passed and things started to change. He started to come in um, late, like 12 o'clock in the morning. But he got up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work. And it wasn't adding up. He told me he was at work this whole time. Sometimes he'll go to work, but not in his work clothes. He worked at an oil rig, but he would go to he would go to work in, like, dress clothes. And I'm like, not stupid. I'm like, what? He was very private. He had a rule, do not go through my phone. I'm like, okay. So... Eventually, he stopped bringing food home, and I started to get depressed. I don't know if my mom caught on. I don't know how she knew. If she knew, I don't know. But she just started bringing me food, and she was like, hey, how about you, Subway? How about you, this? How about you, that? I was like, thank you. I don't know how she caught on to it, but, you know, maybe I was getting skinnier or something. 
it got down to where the only thing I had left in the house was water and beer, and I hated beer. So I had to drink beer to survive. He didn't give me my allowance that he was giving me every day. He was pressuring me to get a job, and I never had a job before, so I was looking for a job. It was hard for me to get a job because I never had a job, so I didn't have any job experience. I started walking to his mom's house, which was like a mile away every day, so I could eat because I did start losing weight. And I was getting depressed. He didn't want to, like, when he got home, he went to sleep. Got back up, went to work. That's that's our only communication. We didn't have communication. One day it was a tornado. He was gone all day. I was crying. I was scared. The trailer was shaking, and I was just acting a fool. But one day he went to sleep, and I said, you know what? I think it's time for me to go through this man's phone. Because something's not adding up. I'm not a fool to nobody. So I paid attention to his little passcode while he was, you know, doing it. And I said, mm, I memorized it. He went to sleep. It was around 12 something, I remember. And I unlocked his phone. And I'm scrolling through the man's phone and I'm like, I don't see nothing. Then I see a text from a woman that says, wife. Oh my God. I'm like, what the heck? Open up the text. She, it's a picture of me and him. And she's like, this is why I want a divorce. I'm like, what? What? What the fuck? Oh, what? <laughs> so I keep scrolling. I'm like shaking at this point. And I'm scrolling and scrolling and I see, when are you going to come pay the bills, babe? What time are you going to be home today, babe? Your wife misses you. What? So I get up. Go in the kitchen. Grab a knife. Oh, shit! And this is teddy bear that he gave me. That I slept with every night. I love that teddy bear so much because he gave it to me as a gift and I never received a gift from any guy. I cut the teddy bear head off and he woke up. He was like, what's going on? What are you doing? And I'm like, you next. And he knew I was serious. So he got up, flung the knife. He tackled me. And he threw me in the living room, which was like next door. He threw me out the room and I like ran to the couch and cried my eyes out that whole night. And I was like, I want to go home. I want to go home. Take me home. Take me home. He was like, no, you stay up in there. I'm like, no, take me home. Take me home. So I spent the night on the couch like crying the whole time. In the morning, he was driving me home. And we didn't speak at all. After I got home, he started texting me and stalking me. He was like, we need to talk about this because it's not what you saw in the phone. I'm just ignoring him. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to talk about this. Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell you. While he was asleep, before I woke him up with that teddy bear, I texted a woman. I was like, um... Hey, I don't mean no disrespect. I'm not a homewrecker. I'm not the type of girl. I'm not even coming to you to be petty or to be disrespectful. But I'm coming to you because I want another woman to tell me. I didn't mean any harm by what I was telling her. But I was just basically, I don't know, like, hey, I've been living with this guy. I had tried to start a relationship with this man, but I'm about to leave. Because this ain't what, it, what I thought it was. I don't believe in adultery at all. I'm married right now. And if my husband... <laughs> Baby! If my husband cheat on me, mm, okay. Anyways, let me get off this. If I get mad at my husband, he ain't did anyways. 
So, okay, so while he was driving, while he was driving me home, we didn't say anything to each other. He started stalking me afterwards. He would blow my phone up. He was like, we need to talk because it's not what it looked like. Like, it's, we're going through a divorce or whatever. So I said, I'm going to move on with life and I'm going to move to Texas. So my family, I had an aunt that lived in Texas. I packed all my bags and I went to Texas. And this man, like, called me crying his eyes out. <laughs> Like, it's not what it seems like. Please come home. I need to explain it to you. We need to at least talk about this. You can't just go off on me like that and not hear my side of the story. Like, so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna listen to his side of the, of the story. Bitch, are you dumb? Pardon me? Are you dumb? I think she's I dumb. I think she's dumb. I think she's dumb. Think are you, you dumb. like, medically speaking, are you like, like I'm not trying to be mean. Like, are you dumb? Are you? D I think she's dumb. I think she's dumb. I think she's dumb. I think is she. Do you oh, think she's? she's she's dumb. dumb. So I go home, and I'm like, "Come get me." He's like, "I can't today." My nephew's stepdad hit him, and I gotta confront this man. So I'm like, "Okay." The next day, come get me. He's like, "I can't." Why not? Because we about to go do a hit on this man's stepdad. I'm like, just come get me. He's like, I can't. I said, you back with your wife, ain't you? He was like, yeah. So I hung up, cut off communication. That was it for me. That was my confirmation. This man is actually married. He's not going through a divorce. This man is, you know, he's with his wife. And I'm a fool. So, I'm pissed because I, I lost my opportunity to move out of state, which is something that I always wanted to do. But I couldn't do it. I was pissed. So, he started stalking me again. This time I didn't respond. I ended up changing my number. And I would go outside and I see his vehicle, like, sitting there on the side behind some trees. He would pull up by my mom's shop that I, like, go to sometimes. He even tried to run me over twice in the middle of the highway. We live in, like, the country country. And our downtown is like a ghost town. I was crossing the street twice. And he hit me, like, he ran up on me like he was going to hit me with his car while I was crossing the street. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Who is that? And I look, and it's him. And he's like, what's up, baby? And I'm like, what the hell? What is wrong with you? Okay, so he just won't leave me alone at this point. He started calling me. He got my phone number from one of my family members. And I pushed that family member out. Like, I spent money to change my number. And you going to get my number away? So, he started calling me from different numbers because I was blocking each number that he called from. He started calling me from co-workers' number. At this point, I'm about to get a restraining order. I'm about to get, like, I'm at the point where I'm about to get a restraining order. And then I received a text. Like, oh, hi, this is Todd's wife. <laughs> And I wanted to talk to you about something. Why are you stalking my husband? I'm like, what? Who, who is stalking your husband? Your husband's stalking me. I'm about to get a restraining order on him and you. She's like, no, he told me you were stalking him. I'm like, lady, leave me alone. Seriously, I don't want your husband. She's like, well, prove it to me. Send a screenshot. She was like, how do I supposed to believe that? I'm like, man, leave me alone, bro. She, like, it got it escalated so much to where this lady wouldn't leave me alone to her. I was like, pull up. Like, what's up? She was like, okay. Next thing I hear is ding dong. Not even, bro. Not even 10 seconds. It's like she was waiting outside my door the whole time. Surprise, motherfucker. Not even 10 seconds. I hear ding dong. As soon as I say pull up, it's her. And I didn't answer the door. My mom answered the door. 
She's like, uh, Pooh Bear, is some ball lady at the door looking for you? I'm like, okay. Her eyes were like really big, like a frog. And her, she was bald, not ball ball, but like, not Wakanda ball, but like, you know, she had a little, little fade. And she, it just was so surreal. She was like, give me your phone. I'm like, no. Why are you here? She's like, I want to see if you if, if you talking about my husband stalking you. I want to see if it's true. Go get your phone. My mom is in the background like, no, she, you're not finna get. She not finna give you her phone. And my dad is like, who was that at the door? My mom was like, Ty's ex-wife. She was like, uh-uh, honey. Let her know. She was like, really proper. Let her know I am his wife, not his ex-wife. I'm like, man, look. You on my phone? I'm going to get it. My mom was like, you're not going to get it. I was like, mama, let me handle this. My mom was like, hold on, because I come out this door. You ain't finna. Like, man, come on now. You doing all this dramatics. Do this on her, not on me. So anyways, I go get my phone. And I show the lady the text messages. I'm like, you see? He's asking me where I'm at. He's sitting up here texting me. I'm telling him to leave me the F alone. Do you get it now? She's like, how do I know these text messages are real? In my mind, I'm like. At this point, nothing that I say is going to convince that this lady convince this lady that I don't want this man and that this man is stalking me. So I say, please leave my yard. She's like, no. I'm like, lady, please leave my yard. She's like, no. And I'm like, lady, please leave my yard. She's like, no, I'm not leaving. I said, Pfft. and she flew back. Oh my God, oh my God, my eye. Boy, I call the police. And like my whole family is looking like, what the hell? So my mom and my dad, as soon as I hit her, my entire family pulled up. Nobody told them to come. It's just coincidentally, these niggas just decided today we just going to pop up and visit. All my cousins, my grandma, all my aunts just got out the car like, what's going on? Like, what the heck? They rushed me up in my room. And I'm in my room. I got like a little temper. But it takes a lot to get my temper. You know, I don't have a quick temper. But I have a temper to where you push it, I'm going to snap. So they in the room trying to calm me down. And everybody leave out the room. My cousins are guarding the door so I won't jump out. I'm pacing in the room like... And she's outside telling my mom and my, and my daddy everything, basically. Like, they've been trying to have a kid. And she, she just telling all my business, basically. And um, my daddy is like, well, this is what they told me the conversation was about. My daddy was like, you know, she's 18. She was like, you're supposed to be a preacher. And you're letting your 18-year-old go live with a 32-year-old man? And my daddy was like, um, you know, she's 18. I can't control what she do. She's grown. She has to make her own mistakes. I might not agree with it. I might have told her not to do it. I might have even encouraged her. Like, hey, I don't think this man is for you. This man is too old. But at the end of the day, she's 18. I can't control what she does. Like, she's going to do what she want to do. She's, you know, legally grown. I don't think she's gone, but she's legally grown and I can't stop her. She's going to have to make her own mistakes herself and bump her head. So they outside fussing, and I'm pacing like, you know, I'm like, bro, ain't no fucking way, bro. This lady came to my... So I calm down, go to the door, and I talk to my cousins. I'm like, hey, y'all, I need to go to the bathroom. They're like, no, you don't. You're lying. I'm like, yeah, I need to go to the restroom. They're like, man, if we let you out the door, you better go to the bathroom. So I'm like, okay. I'm walking, I sprint outside, and I jump over a car. And everybody was like, what? And I jump over the car and I jump on her and I'm just, like, boop, 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 boop. you know, I'm just going around. And, and she's like, and eventually they get me out for her. So after that, she leaves my house. She's pissed. Like she is mad. And they go wherever they go the next day. Matter of fact, when this lady came to my house, it was six months 
after I found out that he had a boyfriend, I mean, that he had a wife. It was like six, it was way, you know, it wasn't even like a couple of weeks. It was six months. I had moved on. I was about to start something. I started talking to somebody else. Like, I was over the situation. And the next day, we woke up and my dad's window was busted out of his truck. 